Hi, this is Jess Mahler, and this is my video for Module 2, Becoming an Online Teacher. So first, to reintroduce myself, my name is Jess Mahler, and I am a learning support teacher at Central Dolphin Middle School. This is my fifth year as a special education teacher, and this year I teach seventh grade learning support English and eighth grade learning support reading. Um, I am getting married this year. My wedding is coming up on September 17th, so I've been very busy wedding planning. Um, I have two pets. I have an Australian Shepherd. There's a picture of him. And I also have a black cat. Um, and I love being outdoors. I enjoy hiking, canoeing, and camping. Um, and I am also a diehard Buffalo Bills fan, um, and I'm pretty sad about it because if you watched the game this past weekend, they went into overtime and unfortunately lost. So their season is over, um, but better luck next year. So first in the Moskowitz article, it discussed prior experience with online learning. Um, and this is the third course that I have participated in as an online learner. Um, so I've been kind of thinking about things that I've been learning in these courses so far and how I would use them in my own online teaching. Um, I taught virtually when schools first shut down in March 2020 due to the pandemic. Um, I also taught on and off hybrid and virtual last school year. Um, there were points that we would have to go virtual because of the COVID cases um, or we had staffing shortages. Um, so last year we were kind of virtual more frequently. Um, this year, however, we are back in school in person um, and we've only been virtual three times this school year and that was due to inclement weather. Um, so I enjoy that my school has that option that instead of canceling and having to make up the day, um, that we'll be able to um, teach virtually from home. Um, so that way um, people are not going out into the bad weather um, and risking, you know, getting in an accident and things like that. So um, I like how technology has kind of um, evolved to be able to do those sort of things um, and think about the safety aspect while still being able to reach those students. So next, Moskowitz discussed online teaching skills. Um, so I went through and did a self audit of the skills that I thought I have already developed and the skills that I think I need to improve on. Um, so my developed skills, um, I said writing skills. Um, I write a lot and especially taking online um, grad courses, it's a lot of writing. So I feel like my writing skills are pretty, um, pretty good. Uh, I'm also pretty good at communicating. Um, since I am a special education teacher, I'm in contact a lot with parents um, as well as students. Since I'm a middle school teacher too, um, my students are on email a lot. So I do email them reminders and directions and different things for their assignments. Um, I have very good time management skills. Um, again, since I am a learning support teacher, there um, is a lot of paperwork and deadlines that I need to meet. So um, I think I've developed a pretty good um, routine for um, staying on track with different things. Um, and I can also recognize different learning needs because I am a learning support teacher. I'm used to adapting different instruction, um, different activities to um, the needs of my individual students. Um, and I'm also pretty good with tech support. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say I'm the greatest, but I'm pretty good at like figuring out issues, troubleshooting, um, figuring out like what to Google and help the students with. Um, so I think I'm a good resource for students currently in my classroom. Um, they always know to come to me first if they have any issues. Um, and then if I can't fix it, I can help them put in a help desk to get to um, our technology resources. So some things that I think I need to improve on um, is online course and content design. Um, that's definitely something that I have not really done a lot of. Um, I'm just kind of using um, what I currently have and putting it on Google Docs or Google Slides and kind of adapting it to make it virtual. So I'm not really utilizing um, as many online um, platforms that I can be. 
Another thing that I think I, I can improve on is um, anticipating student needs, challenges, and potential obstacles. Um, again, because I am, I'm not that familiar with online learning or different virtual um, assignments and platforms, um, I don't really know what kind of challenges the students will face. Um, so I think that's kind of something that um, I'll kind of learn along the way. Um, and I also think that I can improve on my interpersonal and coaching skills, um, especially when they need to be communicated through email messages, online journals, and other asynchronous means. Um, I'm used to face-to-face -to -face instruction, so like giving immediate feedback to my students um, and coaching them through things. So I'm not really that used to doing it through email. Um, now, I, I did do it a little bit um, when we were virtual because of the pandemic. Um, however, my students a lot of the time would email me and um, try to set up like a Zoom with me so then we can talk through um, whatever questions they had. Um, so as far as just like um, nonverbal communication, that's something that I can definitely improve on. So the Moskowitz article and the video Inside the Life of a Cyber Teacher discussed the qualities needed to be an, an effective online teacher. Some of the similarities I noticed between face-to-face -face teaching and online teaching um, are that teachers need to be dedicated and motivated. Um, they also need to be flexible and they need to be able to change lesson design or supplement instruction on, in order to suit individual needs of students. Um, especially me being a learning support teacher, I'm doing this all the time. Um, I'm modifying things for students. I'm changing um, my lessons on the fly. Um, it just depends on how well the students are understanding what I'm trying to teach um, and what they need in order to be successful. Um, another similarity is passion. Of course, teachers need to be passionate about the content that they teach. Um, they want to be able to motivate students to want to learn. Um, they need to make those repeated efforts to connect with students. And of course, they need to create an environment of trust and support. Um, so I think that's obviously the same between face-to-face -face and online. Um, but the way that, they do, that you can do that is um, a bit different. Um, the last similarity is that teachers need patience, whether it's in person or online. Um, they need to be able to react and adjust to unexpected issues and situations as they arise. Some of the things that I saw that were different between face-to-face -face and online instruction is that online teachers work a lot of different hours um, and they work alone, often unsupervised. Another difference that I saw is that the time in which they do teach is spread out a lot differently, and it's usually in smaller, more frequent blocks of time instead of having um, longer class periods in face-to-face -face instruction. Another difference between online learning and face-to-face -face learning is that an online teacher has to monitor discussions, compose weekly announcements, provide online feedback, and manage virtual content. Um, so they are doing um, a lot more managing and online check-ins, feedback, things like that, whereas face-to-face, -face, um, you might have an assignment for students to do. Um, and you can provide feedback verbally um, while you're in class. Um, the last difference that I saw was that um, online teachers need to remain patient with students because they're going to have a lot of questions regarding different aspects of the online course. Um, uh, I saw that uh, students will also have questions with face-to-face -face learning, but because they are probably new to online learning um, or have not been as used to it as face-to-face, -face, they're generally going to have more questions about the online course. So I really enjoyed the video, Inside the Life of a Cyber Teacher. Um, I thought that their online school was really interesting, and I thought it was amazing that they had such high rates of participation. Um, when I was teaching online, it was super, super difficult to get my students to even like acknowledge that they were even there. Um, so the way that the students were interacting, using the emojis, using the hand raise buttons, um, I thought that was just really cool that the students were so involved in their learning. Um, I don't know how 
Um, I can motivate my students to want to be able to participate. Um, I don't require them to turn their cameras on. We do have those little emoji things on Zoom that I tell them they can use, um, but I don't know. It's, it's really hard to reach those students when I have a feeling they're not even on the other side of the screen um, because I cannot see their camera. Um, but I don't know. I just, I thought the video was really cool and it was a really cool way to see how online learning can look um, because I've just been seeing it the way I've been teaching and that's minimal participation. And, um, you know, frankly, it's kind of boring when you're just talking to yourself, yourself the whole class period. Um, so I'm hoping I can take some of these things that I learned in this class and um, kind of spice up my own online learning for my students. The Archambault article discusses challenges with online teaching um, and the challenges that I felt were most difficult for me is that online teaching takes a lot of time. When we first shut down in March of 2020, I remember I was recording videos until so late at night um, because we were required to do asynchronous instruction. So I was trying to get all of this material ready for my students and record videos and instructions and all these different things. Um, and it was kind of, um, I don't know, defeating because I saw that not many of my students even watched the videos. So um, just the amount of time it took to create all that content, um, and then just like kind of being bummed that my students didn't even really watch it. Um, another challenge that um, Archibald described in their article was that teachers often don't have control over their content or the curriculum that's being taught. Um, they also cannot modify or make corrections to it. Um, and I kind of struggle with this too, I guess because I'm a learning support reading teacher, we are required to use the curriculum provided to us. Um, and my students aren't really big fans of it. Um, it's the Read 180 curriculum, if anybody in this class teaches that. Um, yeah, my students aren't the biggest fans of it, but because it is um, the curriculum provided to us, it is a um, mostly scripted curriculum. Um, so I can't really deviate from it too much. Um, but I do try to add some stuff into it to make it more exciting. Um, but I thought that was a a thing that resonated with me because I am experiencing that same thing with um, having the challenge of not being able to change my curriculum. Another challenge was that um, some students are just not suited for online learning um, and it can be very difficult to reach them and get them engaged in learning. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, it was really hard to get my students to participate in any sort of class activities when we were virtual. Um, so again, I'm hoping I learn ways that I can um, better engage my students and have them participate more. Um, and I guess that goes with the last challenge as well. Um, it's difficult to engage students and help keeping them on track um, because a lot of these online um, learning programs are asynchronous. Students can fall behind and um, a lot of times they will not be able to catch up if they are not held accountable and um, are kept on track by a teacher. Um, so it's important for teachers to check in with students and make sure they're on track. Um, that's like kind of what I do as a learning support teacher. I check in with all my students and make sure they're turning in their work. Um, so I think that'll be a challenge for me, just transitioning that aspect into online learning because I am not physically face-to-face -face with my students.